viewers, welcome once again to EMF TV. It's a blessing to be with you once again. We thank God for how far he has brought us. It's been a while, but we have something very special for you today. So I hope you're ready to listen just as I'm eager to. Today we have a very beautiful discussion. It's something we are all thinking about, talking about. We want to bring it out there. Today we are talking about Psalm 91 and the verse. Psalm 91 and the verse. A lot of talking is going on around the verse. We want to talk about it. We want to bring it out there. We want to discuss. So put your voice with us and let us do this together. Today, for us to discuss this uh, topic, beautiful topic, we have Dr. Brown, some, somebody we know with EMF TV. He's been with us so many times when we started. So welcome once again, Dr. Brown to EMF TV. Can you please tell us a little about yourself just to remind people <laughs> of who you are? Thank you, Mavis. Sometimes I have to remind myself uh, who I am. So that's a great <laughs> question to ask. So I, um, I teach at Columbia Theological Seminary in Decatur, Georgia, uh, where your husband is a student. Yeah. And, uh, and you know that community quite well. And yeah. I do too. I teach Old Testament or Hebrew Bible. And I'm surrounded by a great number of wonderful colleagues uh, who teach in various areas of Christian education and theology and history. Uh, it's great to be back with you all. It's been, oh my, it's been a couple of years or so, I think, um, or at least a year and a half. Um, uh, so it's great to be back to, uh, to reconnect with your viewers and listeners across the world uh, in this fabulous ministry that you and your husband uh, have uh, continued to sustain. So it's, a, it's an honor to be back and to talk with you, Mavis, about this most important issue. Yes, yes. Thank you very much for coming. We, we so appreciate you and your time. So we're going to talk about Psalm 91. So before we start, can you please read it for us so we know? <laughs> I, I would be happy to. And so this comes from the uh, NRSV, the New Revised Standard Version, uh, which is a pretty good translation. Uh, so I'll read from that. Psalm 91. You who live in the shelter of the Most High, who abide in the shadow of the Almighty, will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For God will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. God will cover you with his opinions and under his wings you will find refuge. God's faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night or the arrow that flies by day or the pestilence that stalks in darkness, or the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, the most high your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, no scourge come near your tent. For God will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands, they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Those who love me, I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. When they call to me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. With long life, I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Such, oh God, such a reassurance <laughs> for those of us who believe in God. Yes. Oh, it's a blessing to hear this. So with, with Psalm 91, Psalm, what, what, what is Psalm 91 saying about the faith and our reliance on, on God for protection? Well, that's exactly right, Mavis. This is a psalm of protection, a psalm of trust. Uh, it encourages us to place our trust in God 
to call upon God in times of trouble and to rely upon God. Yes. And that means uh, praying to God for help. Uh, at one point, it said that you will call to me and I will answer you. Um, and it's also a, um, it's a psalm that encourages us to abide in God's shadow. Uh, actually, it's more poetic in the Hebrew, uh, to abide in the shadow of Shaddai. Shaddai is the title of God that means most high. And so what does it mean to abide in God's refuge, in God's shadow? It's as if God has wings. Other Psalms, like Psalm 17, talk about um, finding shelter under God's wings. So God is a protector uh, in this Psalm. Also in Psalm, like Psalm 121, um, uh, from whence comes our help? As I lift my eyes unto the hills, my help comes from the Lord, my God. Uh, and so there are many Psalms of trust in the Psalter. And Psalm 91 is uh, a particularly vivid one. It's a powerful Psalm. It's been uh, recited uh, throughout the centuries uh, by Christians and Jews uh, seeking protection from God in times of crises and, and trouble, uh, including times of, uh, of, of plague. Um, and so, yeah, this is a good psalm to talk about, to begin our discussion about uh, uh, God's provision and protection in the face of uh, COVID-19, the, the virus that has brought about this global pandemic that has lasted now for uh, almost a year and a half. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. So God is our protector from what you have said. So does God go through people's effort at times to deliver us? That's right. That's right. I mean, uh, we read in the stories of, uh, of the Bible, uh, like the ancient Israelites who cried out, in anguish during uh, their time in bondage in Egypt and the, during their enslavement. And uh, God appointed Moses um, to uh, let God's people go. And, and so you have in the book, in the story of the Exodus, um, uh, God at work and human leaders at work as well. Um, there is both miracle and uh, human agency at work uh, together. So Moses and Aaron helped lead the people out of their uh, enslavement with God accompanying them. Um, and uh, so, yeah, you have God collaborating with human leaders um, uh, to bring about uh, uh, deliverance and salvation. And of course, we see that in Jesus Christ as well, the word made flesh. Um, and it's through in God and, and Jesus as fully human and fully God, uh, bringing about our own salvation on the cross. And so it's as if God does not like to work alone. God works with others. And, um, and those of us who are in training uh, to be leaders of the church and those of us who are leaders of the church today uh, recognize that God works through people. And in and, and, and other ways as well. Uh, so I think that's a good point to, to note at the beginning, is that God's protection, mm -hmm. God's provision can happen in many different ways. It can be miraculous. It can also be through human agency. And I would argue, uh, and this might be the topic of a lot of our discussion, that I think God works through the vaccine as well, uh, through scientists uh, who have developed this, um, carefully um, and uh, with great, great care, um, with uh, stringent uh, scientific methods uh, in order to bring this uh, as a vaccine uh, for us, in order to protect us from the virus. Uh, so I recognize there's a lot of contention about that because yes. many of our Christian siblings um, believe that uh, in trusting in God, God will miraculously protect us from the virus without any, any human help. Yes. Yeah, so, so many are refusing to take the vaccine because they think that taking the vaccine 
is itself a failure of trusting in God. <laughs> yeah. And so you have that argument. Um, and I want to argue that uh, actually God provides and protects in different ways, in many ways. We see that in the Bible, and I think we can see that here. And so I'm going to argue that taking the vaccine is not a failure in trust. It's not taken out of fear of a virus. It actually can be a form of trust. It is a form of trusting God. Um, and um, and this is a personal testimony. My family and I have taken the vaccine. We are now fully immunized. And, and now we feel confident to go out. We find ourselves more free to go out um, and uh, resume our lives. Uh, we will never return back to a sense of normalcy, I don't think. I mean, we wear our masks still in crowded places indoors, but we also feel more confident as well uh, because for me and my family, uh, the vaccine is an answer to prayer. Okay. Uh, it is a it is a form of God protecting us, um, and so we we took this vaccine not out of fear or lack of trust in God, but out of wisdom. Uh, we think it is the wise thing to do uh, right now. So so that's how I'm how I want to begin this uh, conversation. Yeah. <laughs> so let's let's continue. So maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Please. <laughs> that, that was my next question actually because when um COVID nineteen came around. We all got scared. Some people talked about the end of time has come. Some people said, there's no way around this. The world has changed. We prayed, Christians prayed. And the church changed because we couldn't meet together to fellowship. Mm -hmm. And so we prayed that God rescue us, give us a solution. And now there's the vaccine. Do you sincerely think that this is a prayer answered? I do, I do indeed. Um, and, and let me go back to Psalm 91. You know, it's interesting that uh, the psalm of protection uh, that uh, uh, praises those who trust in God, encourages others to trust in God even more, um, that trust in God does not mean that we can go ahead and live our lives recklessly and putting ourselves in danger, thinking that God is going to rescue us anytime <laughs> that we are in a situation of danger, particularly those that we bring upon ourselves. And Jesus recognized that because in the story of Jesus's temptation that we find in the gospel of Matthew and in Luke, uh, particularly those two gospels, we find uh, Jesus in the wilderness, uh, tempted by the devil. And a portion of Psalm 91 actually is quoted, but not by Jesus. It's quoted by the devil. Oh, yes. <laughs> and so I, I'd like to read that passage as well. Okay. Uh, and I'm reading from uh, Matthew chapter four, uh, beginning with verse five. Then the devil took Jesus to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. The devil is quoting Psalm 91, verses 11 and 12. And so what does Jesus say? Does Jesus say, okay, let's do that. I trust in God. I'm the son of God. I will throw myself from the top of the temple knowing that God is going to rescue me. <laughs> no, Jesus doesn't say that. Jesus refuses uh, the devil here and says, uh, says to the devil, again, it is written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Jesus is quoting from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 16. And so Jesus recognizes that uh, we are not to go about putting our lives at risk, that, um, that, we, that we must be careful, that out of wisdom we go forward, uh, avoiding um, situations of danger that could kill us, and that God is not going to rescue us when we put ourselves recklessly in danger. That seems to be what Jesus is saying. And what's interesting here 
is that when Jesus quotes chapter 6, verse 16 of Deuteronomy, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Yes. That very next verse, in verse 17 of chapter 6 of Deuteronomy, it says, you shall diligently obey the commandments of the Lord your God. And so what does that mean? Well, for me, one of the reasons that I have accepted taking the vaccine mm -hmm. is to actually obey the second greatest commandment of God. And that is to love your neighbor as yourself. The first great commandment, these are the two commandments quoted by Jesus uh, in the Gospels, but they, they come from the Old Testament as well. Uh, the, the first greatest commandment to, Lord, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. That comes from Deuteronomy chapter 6 as well. Uh, and then the second greatest commandment quoted by Jesus comes from Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18, love your neighbor as yes. yourself. And so Jesus says, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. And so for Jesus, these two commandments summarize the whole Torah of the Old Testament. And so I take those two commandments, of course, very seriously, as all Jews and Christians do. And I find accepting the vaccine to be actually a fulfillment of my way of obeying the second greatest commandment, love your neighbor as yourself. Because I, I love myself, uh, I want to protect myself because I am, um, my body is a temple of God. It is a vessel of God. I need to take care of that temple so I can continue to do the work of God, to glorify God, and all that I do. And in so doing, um, I want to do things that protect my body, take care of my body uh, using the best of medicine that is available to me and to encourage others to do that. And so by taking the vaccine, not only do I protect myself from the COVID-19 virus, I'm also protecting others because then I am no longer a carrier of a virus to infect others as I go about um, uh, uh, doing ministry and teaching and uh, worshiping uh, together. So uh, it is out of the love of my neighbor, uh, that is love of all with whom I have contact, as well as, as love for myself, that uh, is a basic commandment of God. Yes. <laughs> so I find Jesus, um, uh, really sharpening our understanding of Psalm 91, uh, the Psalm of protection. That is to say that it is our responsibility uh, to be safe. Um, it is our responsibility to find uh, the ways that God provides to protect ourselves. And that means more than simply praying to God and then going out and doing our business as if there was no virus. Uh, <laughs> uh, that, that is living recklessly. Yeah. And uh, today now, um, here in the United States, um, where the vaccine is imminently available to anyone who chooses to receive it, um, here now that uh, the United States has surpassed 600,000 deaths uh, caused by COVID-19, from here on out, um, from, uh, from children as young as 12, uh, all the way to uh, those who are in their 90s, uh, with the vaccine being so widely available. Every death now in the United States of America is a preventable death. Um, that is, those, those who um, are now dying from COVID are those, uh, by and large, are those who uh, have not been vaccinated. And, and that is really, really tragic. Of course, there was a time, you know, at the height of the pandemic uh, here in the United States, in which, of course, we had no vaccine. Um, and, um, and there were less ways to prevent from being infected. Um, of course, social distancing and the wearing of masks, which my family and I have done um, very dutifully. Uh, we, we thank God that we um, we 
were able to protect ourselves from the virus um, through the rules um, that uh, were uh, uh, cited to encourage uh, uh, the American population and, and throughout the world, in fact. But now that we have the vaccine that has been thoroughly tested as, as safe, um, uh, that uh, to, to refuse to take the vaccine, in my mind, is is uh, is uh, a failure to trust God. It is it is a uh, as Jesus says, um, it is um, it is a way of tempting God. Okay, that's that's what Jesus said uh, to, to to throw to throw yourself off the temple, uh, thinking that God is going to rescue you. That's not trust in God. That is tempting God. God. Okay. And I would say by analogy that by refusing to take the vaccine, that is not trusting God, that is tempting God. Okay. And the results can be very, very tragic. Uh, yes. Given, yes. Um, given the power of this virus, it is nothing to play with. It is, uh, it is, it is truly a danger uh, to, to everyone. Okay, thank you very much. I, I was talking to somebody about COVID-19 vaccine and the person told me, usually when a vaccine comes out, it's not really well tested and they don't know all the side effects and what can happen years to come. It takes a while to get that data together. Right. So how are we sure that taking this vaccine is not introducing something else into the system? Yeah, so um, I, I'd, say, I'd encourage folks to go to the um, Centers of Disease Control, the website, the CDC website, uh, to know the facts. Um, and so uh, this vaccine, uh, the vaccines, um, beginning with Pfizer and Moderna, uh, and now Johnson & Johnson, they have been thoroughly tested. And that's why, I mean, it took over a year uh, for the vaccines to be developed and tested. Now, granted, uh, they are under emergency use. Yes. And so the approval for general use has not been granted yet by the FDA. And that'll be just a matter of months. And I predict that uh, by the end of the calendar year, uh, it will have full approval by the FDA uh, as generally approved. Uh, but, but we are in an emergency um, because the virus <laughs> itself is an emergency. Yes. Uh, so it's understandable. Um, and, uh, and, and so the data, the data show that uh, it, is, it is safe. Um, there is a concern for those who have autoimmune um, uh, challenges. And so yes. there are some exceptional cases where the vaccine is not recommended. Um, and, and so uh, enough people have been vaccinated, uh, particularly now. Um, um, uh, I mean, we've had confirmation after confirmation day by day as to the power or the efficacy of these vaccines to, uh, to help people uh, be safe from the virus. And so um, I, I understand some hesitancy here uh, for, for many folks, uh, Christians and otherwise. Um, uh, the technology, uh, the mRNA technology that you have in the Moderna and Pfizer vaccines, which require two doses, um, this, this is the first time that has been used widely in a vaccine, although the technology is relatively old. It's been in development for over 10 years now. Okay. Uh, so, uh, but again, it's been tested. That's why you had this testing period for, for months on end. Um, and, uh, and the results are very clear that it is safe for mostly everyone. Uh, so, so you have that. Mm -hmm. On the other end, you have rising concerns about the virus and its variants, uh, the mutation. Yes. And uh, the new Delta variant um, that um, is becoming dominant. Um, yes. It's already been dominant in India. It's becoming dominant in the UK. And the prediction is that it will be the dominant strain of the virus here in the United States uh, by the fall, maybe, maybe closer to the end of the summer. And, and that is more aggressive it's more transmissible, and it's more severe for those who are not vaccinated. So, uh, so you have two things. You have the safety of the vaccine that has mm -hmm. proven its efficacy. 
On the other hand, you have in the future, in the very near future, a variant of the virus, which is even stronger than the original COVID um, uh, virus that, uh, that emerged in the first place. Uh, so the time really is now. Uh, the time is, is, is no longer, I think most folks can wait. Um, uh, the hesitancy should be over now, uh, <laughs> given, given the safety of the, of the vaccine and, and given what's coming, uh, a stronger virus, a stronger variant um, that uh, uh, will, will be particularly hard on those who are unvaccinated, uh, I'd say uh, within the next uh, month or so um, as we move towards the end of the summer. Um, and the thing to note that, and this is important information, uh, with the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines, um, it, it, takes, uh, it takes about eight weeks to be fully immune, uh, which means taking both doses um, and then waiting two weeks after the second dose. And so the timing could not be more urgent at this point. Uh, in order to be fully immune by the time the, um, yeah, by, time, by the time the Delta uh, variant becomes dominant, um, the timing is now uh, to, take, to start taking the vaccine regimen um, as soon as possible. So one reason I'm here on this, uh, on your wonderful TV channel, uh, <laughs> wonderful ministry, this broadcast is to save lives. Yes. It is to save lives. Yes. And um, that is God's mission. Uh, it's the mission of God in Jesus Christ to save. And uh, that doesn't mean just being saved to go up to heaven. It means being saved here on yeah, earth on as earth well. Too. Uh, and, and making real the kingdom of God on this earth. And part of God's kingdom is that life that human beings can flourish and to receive abundant life here and now and to feel secure and, and safe. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, so for me, the vaccine is a gift from God. I believe so. uh, uh, it reminds me of a story. Uh, this was a story that was shared to me by a student uh, uh, last spring. It's actually fairly well known, but it's, a, it's about a, uh, a town that got flooded. And, uh, and people drowned. And one man was able to uh, climb up on his roof uh, to escape the rising waters. And he prayed to God, go oh, God, come and rescue me. <laughs> and so he waited and he waited. And, and finally a boat came by uh, and uh, he was invited to come on board. And he said, no, no, I'm waiting for God to rescue me. <sighs> and then a helicopter came and uh, offered him rescue. And he said, no, I, no, no, God is coming to rescue me, go away. And then somebody with a home-built raft came by and offered him passage. And he said, no, I'm waiting for God to rescue me. As the water kept rising and rising, and then he himself drowned. And so when he went to heaven, uh, he said, God, why didn't you rescue me from the flood? And God said, well, I sent the boat and I sent the helicopter and I sent the raft and you refused all three of the ways I was planning to rescue you. So I think the vaccine is like that too. This is God's <laughs> way of, of, of rescuing us from, from imminent danger. Um, God does not want any of us to suffer an untimely death. And so I thank God for medicine and for good food and for health and for ways of keeping our bodies healthy. And so it's just like, um, you know, I, we, my family and I say a prayer of Thanksgiving every time before we eat a meal. Yeah. And, uh, and we, I also know that uh, our, our meal uh, comes from farmers, from the land, but from farmers who cultivate the land and yes. harvest the land and those who, uh, um, uh, those, those who, yeah, harvest and uh, and ship it. Uh, as an aside, of course, we we want uh, particularly to uh, um, uh, receive our food from local farms uh, rather than far away. But uh, in giving thanks to God in prayer, 
by saying grace, uh, we also give thanks to the farmers and those who uh, have helped bring the food to our table. And, and so I thank God for the vaccine. And at the same time, I thank God for the scientists and for the, uh, all the medical professionals um, and uh, doctors and nurses who take care of us. And uh, uh, so what's the difference really uh, between uh, the food that comes to our table to sustain our bodies as we eat well and the vaccines that are developed by scientists uh, through rigorous methods uh, such that we can remain healthy, particularly in the face of, uh, of viruses, and particularly this time of a pandemic. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of information. Viewers, we've heard a lot from Dr. Brown today. It's out there. If you have the opportunity, what he's saying is, go get it. Because that is loving your neighbor as yourself, the commandment of God. So we, we've had a lot. We have to digest it. Some people still not sure because... Now, some people think that taking this vaccine is putting God to test, like he's not able. And others also think that not taking it is not trusting God enough for what he's able to do through his own creation, man. So that's why people are now. It's like, I believe God will rescue me so I don't have to introduce any foreign material into my body for it to be accomplished. And others are like, like you are saying, if you don't do it, you are putting God to test. So can we come a little bit closer, both of us from both sides, like come a little closer? <laughs> yeah. I think that's exactly right. Um, uh, Mavis, you, you put one, you identified one thing that a lot of people are, are kind of, uh, are dubious about, and that is uh, injecting something foreign into our bodies. Um, the uh, mRNA vaccine, the Moderna and the, uh, and the Pfizer vaccines, uh, the mRNA uh, is basically a messenger that is meant to teach our bodies how to defend, uh, defend us um, against the, the virus. It's, it's a form of instruction that is meant to help produce a protein that, uh, that serves an antibody against the virus. It has, it has nothing to do with our DNA. It does not genetically manipulate us uh, by messing with our DNA because the mRNA vaccine never gets into the nucleus of a cell. Well, okay. It simply instructs the body to produce a certain vaccine, uh, rather to produce a certain antibody uh, that will then ward us off from the, 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 the actual virus. And so it's, um, it's, it's not injecting something foreign that's going to mess up your DNA. Yeah. Uh, it's not that. That's not how this vaccine uh, works. It's, it's actually a messenger that is meant to teach our body how to produce a certain antibody to protect our bodies. And the fact is, is that... Uh, we, we eat foods, um, uh, some of them, some of those foods are with additives and preservatives. Those are foreign things as well, but uh, we can't avoid them. Um, uh, although we can lessen to a degree um, the amount of additives and preservatives that we consume by eating um, non-processed foods, uh, for instance. Uh, but, uh, you know, if I have an infection, uh, I'm going to the doctor to receive um, uh, an antibiotic. Yes. And I have no problem with that. And I think most folks don't either. Uh, and so getting the vaccine is really no different, I think, uh, ethically and, and theologically. Um, uh, if, if you're concerned about the vaccine, ask yourself, well, uh, do you take any other form of medicine? Um, I mean, I take, I take vitamin pill mm -hmm. uh, every day. Um, and uh, many folks take uh, uh, medicine for high blood pressure. Um, and uh, yeah, and, and so we, we are, we're already taking medicines and, and we know that they have helped our bodies um, and, and they fortify our bodies. 
bodies and and they are ways of taking care of our bodies yeah. uh, i also believe in exercise and keeping good health uh, and eating um uh a, a a diverse array of foods uh, particularly vegetables i i emphasize plant-based foods in my diet uh, because i know that's healthier for me than eating meat every day every day yeah yeah so uh and so it's with that those reasons of how I've been keeping my body and taking care of the temple of God within me so that I can serve God better uh, uh, through the length of my life, uh, then uh, I, I have had no problem taking the vaccine as a result, uh, both for me and, and for my family. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. One last thing I would uh, bring in. I know you are uh, Talking about this, I see you writing about it. So I want us to talk a little about it. When it comes to the issue of race and vaccine. Race. Yeah. And thank vaccine. You. Yeah. Can All you right. can you throw a little bit light on there? Yeah. So um uh I let me just say I understand, particularly among communities of color here in the United States, a certain suspicion of uh, awareness about uh, science and, uh, and taking the vaccine because there's a history there. Yes. And that history is um, from the eugenics movement, the horrific eugenics movement in America to the Tuskegee experiment uh, uh, regarding syphilis in which mm -hmm. uh, black Americans have been subjected to experiments yes. that have led to untold misery and death. And so that's part of the horrific legacy of uh, scientific experimentation in, in the US. It's sort of like what it took place in Germany with the rise of Nazism, in which uh, Jews were experimented on um, uh, in horrific ways as, as well. And, and there are those who have written on the parallels between the two, like Isabel Wilkerson in her, her book, Cast, um, The Origins of Our Discontents. And so I, I want to acknowledge that and, and, uh, and honor that. And so I would say that communities of color have more reason to be suspicious uh, given their history with, uh, uh, with science and particularly with medicine uh, than, than me as a white person. So I recognize that and I honor that. And um, I also give thanks for uh, black leaders, um, whether in politics uh, or in the church, who are encouraging um, uh, Black Americans to take the vaccine uh, because of its uh, record of, of safety. Um, and so, so I recognize that tension. Uh, and it's, it's, as you said, Mavis, it's good to put it out there to recognize that um, because uh, that, that was part and continues, that was part of the um, uh, American history of racism in this country of Americans' original sin. But I think, <laughs> I, I firmly believe um, that uh, the science has overcome that. Uh, it truly has. And uh, that's why there's been uh, such a, a drive in this vaccination program to really uh, talk to uh, particularly Black Americans, um, uh, given uh, the horrific history that Blacks have suffered uh, here in this country. So, yeah, thank you for bringing that up. Um, and thank you too. Yeah, I, I have, I have um, uh, in, in my extended family and, and associates and acquaintances uh, of, of white Americans, um, my, um, you might say my mission is to convince uh, some of them who are um, not just hesitant, but really anti-vaxxers. Um, uh, <laughs> Partly because, uh, and, and, and bringing up uh, the Bible in order to support their, their claims on this. For instance, um, you may not have heard of this, but I've, I'm beginning to hear this, that cer certain white Christians um, are saying that accepting the vaccine is like uh, receiving the mark of the beast. Oh, yes. Okay. The book of Revelation. <laughs> yeah, the six and, six. Um, So... Uh, yeah, so I'm happy to talk about uh, the mark of the beast in the book of Revelation as having nothing to do with taking the vaccine. The mark of the beast has all to do with your loyalty with whom you worship. 
And, and the beast in the book of the Revel book of Revelation has all to do with Roman imperial worship. And, um, and the, the number 666 refers to the name of Nero Caesar, uh, the, the Nero, Emperor Nero at that time when John on the island of Patmos received those visions from God as recorded in the book of Revelation. And then he wrote them as uh, seven letters uh, to seven churches. And the mark of the beast is not a physical uh, thing that you uh, receive on your body uh, or within your body. It is a mark of whom you are loyal to. You're either loyal to the beast, uh, to the uh, uh, the emperor, the human emperor, uh, or you're loyal to the lamb. There's also the mark of the lamb, and that is uh, one's loyalty to Jesus Christ, uh, the, the, the lamb um, uh, whose blood was shed for the salvation of all. Uh, so it is totally illegitimate to <laughs> the vaccine with the mark of the beast. Uh, but those are some of the conversations I'm having with, uh, with my fellow uh, Christians on the uh, white side <laughs> you know, of the racial spectrum in the United States. So I, I just wanted to bring that out as well. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. We so appreciate you. We've had a lot. I think we have a lot to go up on and make a decision as to whether love yourself as to love your neighbor or just put God to test. So please, do you have something for the viewers? Something you want to get, live with us today? Yeah, if I may say a prayer. Yes. Gracious God, we give you thanks for all the ways you have gifted us uh, to sustain us. We give you thanks for life itself. And we know that nothing can separate us from your love, O oh God, heights, nor depths, nor principalities and powers, and not even illness and death can separate us from your love. And so we acknowledge, O oh God, that we belong to you. We acknowledge that you care for us. You love us. You have demonstrated your love in Jesus Christ on the cross. And so, God, as we move forward in this time of danger and fear, we know that in your love and in our trust of you, with your rod and your staff, we have no fear that we will ever be separated from you. And God, we give you thanks for the wisdom you have endowed us with. Wisdom that uh, finds its way in science and in the ways we eat and keep our bodies healthy. Oh God, I give you thanks for the gift of the vaccine as another way in which you keep us healthy and secure and, and, sa and safe. Oh God, I pray that more and more of your children will take the vaccine when it is available, will take the vaccine in order to lead their lives with confidence um, to resume uh, their productivity and their livelihood. Oh God, I firmly believe that this vaccine is a mark and a sign of the abundant life that you promise us not just in heaven, but here on earth. Oh God, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And may more of us receive your life-giving, health-giving instruments of this vaccine so that we can continue to serve you and to serve each other so that we can love you on this, in this life and love our neighbors as by protecting us, we protect others as well. Oh God, grant us wisdom and grant us a sense of urgency uh, to receive this gift, oh God. Thank you, God, for saving us in so many ways. For I ask this in Christ's name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you so very much. So viewers, once again, this is MF TV. When we come your way, we are touching lives when, when necessary. Like uh, Doc said, we are here to save lives. This is urgent. This is an emergency. We have to treat it as such. And so the information is out there. If you have the option to get the vaccine, go get it. 
and save your life and save the lives of others around you too. If you are not where you can get it, wear your mask, protect yourself, social distance. Don't go where, if you have to go, just be precautious. If you don't have to go, stay away from crowds and God will bless you. So we will meet you same time next week. We have a lot to talk about. We have so much in stuff for you. So don't leave us, stay with us all the time and God bless you and have a very wonderful week. We will meet same time. Bye-bye. My dear friends, this is Emave TV. Indeed, we are touching lives. I encourage you to keep on watching Emave TV. And I can assure you that your life will not be the same. Emave TV, touching lives where necessary. <laughs>